Okay, firstly, uh, how are you today, David? I'm fantastic. I'm excited. I'm looking forward to this mega event tomorrow, one of the biggest fights I can ever remember going to, you know, 80,000 people. That doesn't happen in boxing, you know, anywhere in the world. This is a one-off, you know, a mega event, and I'm just happy to be part of it. Yeah, I mean, looking at the preparation for this fight, I mean, a lot of people are talking about uh, Cole's mentality, his approach. Mm -hmm. He seems a lot more focused. I mean, but in reality, what can Carl Frotch do differently in this fight where he can handle what George, George can bring to the ring? The first thing Carl can do is not get nearly knocked out in the first round. That'd be the first, that'd be the top of the list of things. If I was him, don't get sploshed in the first round. Don't end up getting knocked down heavily. Not a flash, there are flash knockdowns and they're yeah. knocked out. That was a knockdown. He really got knocked down. Don't do that. That's what you can do differently. That will change the whole dynamics of the fight. When you get knocked down like that, your legs are numb and your, your head's spinning. You can't do what you need to do. You're just surviving then. Don't do that. So your question was, what can you do differently? The answer is way better early. You know, get a foothold in the fight a lot quicker. Don't wait for your guy. Don't, don't let your opponent punch himself out on your head. For starters, that's, where, that's definitely one of... Another good, good bit of advice there, but it's just it's going to be a great fight. But as you said, both fights, both fighters have um, prepared, you know, maximally, and they're really going to put it on the line. Yeah, the assumption is if Carl comes in better than he did before, then he will win the fight. However, in my opinion, um, George's error in the first lack of discipline going into the later rounds kind of cost. Who's, the fight. who's lack of discipline? George is in that first fight. What do you mean? What did he? What do you he think? Seems he... to get, Around about the seventh round, he seems to get dragged into a war where really, okay. maybe under Adam Boo, who's a bit more tactical minded, very good tactical coach, he may have stayed on the outside and boxed and just carried on doing what he'd done so well. I mean, what's your thoughts on that? Um, I, I don't think it was something that he did in the later rounds. I think he was doing, he was warring with him in the first round. Yeah. He was warring with him in the second round. I think the only difference is um, he, was, he was fresher in the early rounds and he was able to get the better of the exchanges. Uh, I don't think it was a lack of discipline. No, he was he was setting his ways to do what he was doing. Um, I think what changed was the 50-50 exchanges that George was winning earlier because he's younger and fresher, seems quicker to the punch, a bit sharper all round. That got jaded. That 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 edge he had in speed and youth and whatever you want to call it changed. The 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 the, um, the flow changed. It was George getting the better of the 50-50 exchanges. And slowly but surely, Carl started to. They'd have like five or six punches and George ended up taking the worst of it. Yeah. And that, had, that swapped over in the fight. So I don't think it was a lack of discipline. George didn't, wasn't just boxing and all of a sudden started to war with him. No, he, he, it just may, may have appeared that way. But because he was, he was trading with, with Carl in the first round, in the second round, third round, big exchanges. They were both trading punches, but George was doing better because he was fresher. Yeah. You know, if, if George could have stayed fresh for the whole time, different story. But he didn't. Yeah. He got tired. And that's when Carl, in the, with, with the bigger engine, sort of came through and started taking over the fight. Who would have known if that, if, 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 Carl, if George wouldn't have got stopped, who knows what would have happened? Nobody knows. It's a, it's a, it's a, this is what this fight's all about. We want to know what would have really happened. Yeah, you said about being fresher. I mean, George's speed in particular is what gives him the edge over Carl. It gives George the edge over most of his opponents. I've sparred with George and he's very, very, very fast, very fast. He's got a very deceptive jab. You know, he doesn't look hard, but he's very solid. He's very heavy-handed, uh, George. And um, I think he'll give anybody in the world a hard night because of that speed. Uh, but then again, Carl's not slow. Nothing, there's nothing slow about Carl. If you think Carl's just slow, you, you've, got, you've got another thing coming. Carl hasn't knocked out as many people he has because he's slow. You know, he's, a, he's, a very far, he's a very fast fighter as well. I don't think he's as fast as George, but he's not far behind. Could um, you have fought outside at Upton Park? How much of a big difference is it from fighting in an outdoor arena compared to fighting indoors? Um, obviously, you've got the, the volume of people. The noise is a little different. You've got the fresh air. You know, Normally, in a stadium, you've got everyone's breathing the air and your air conditioning. It's not the, it's, it feels a bit uh, artificial. But when you fight in an open door, it feels natural. You, you can breathe real, real air in. It feels nice. And it feels like you've got an extra, you can have an extra gear, an extra, you've got extra energy that you may not have in an in 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 indoor closed uh, arena. Does it take a bit of time to like get warmed up though? Uh, no, it's a bit cooler outside than it would be indoors. 
Um, but that's what you, you adapt that into your training, into your warm up. You make sure you warm up, and you'll notice both fighters will probably come out in heavily gowned with a towel underneath to make sure they're nice and warm because you don't want to go out into a fight cold. You know, Carl may have came out into the last fight pretty cold, and he end up on the seat of his pants. And uh, do you have a prediction for the fight? No prediction, unfortunately. Sorry, mate. No prediction. How much do you think the mind games play in the second fight? Because obviously, the first fight, George seemed to be well on top. Mm-hmm. The second fight, there's been lots of times where Crotch has asked him questions, and kind of Groves has just looked at him like. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know why. I, I don't think it's because George was lost for words. I don't know. I don't know what it was. Like, sometimes less. It's, like, it's, it's kind of like a maze. Like Crotch is yeah, I'm, not, I'm not sure. Is I'm not sure. I don't know. He's amazed. I think he might be just looking at it with disdain, like he's. Are you still talking? I don't know. It's just, it made me laugh though when I saw it. It was quite funny. Um, but it, I don't know. I don't, all, bottom line, all of, all of what's said and done and tweets and posts and this and that, it doesn't mean anything. Once that first bell rings, that's the only thing that matters. Just because someone got the better of a better of an argument in a studio round tape, when they fight, it's not going to make someone's jab any worse. It's, it's what's going to happen is going to happen. How much should fans look into the sparring session between Eubank and... I mean, it looked like Eubank got the better of him, but again, when you were sparring Wilder, you got the better of Wilder. It looked on the thing. So you can make any, you can make any. Uh, I could have, t- I could have put some clips together of me sparring where I looked like I actually got smashed to bits by Wilder. Yeah. You know, it's just what you decide to put out there. Maybe Carl, I said, okay, get some clips where I don't look so great. Put, put it out there. Yeah. So everyone like. Like you exactly. are thinking, yeah, Carl got beat up. It, all it take, all you got to do is go out there and bake up. Yeah, it's, it's, it's easily Thank done. You know, you can you can uh, you can uh, manipulate it to make it look whichever way you want it to look. So I wouldn't, uh, t- I didn't take too much. I've seen George, ha- um, I've seen I've seen uh, Chris Eubank Jr. have the same success on George as mm-hmm. I've seen him having it against Carl. I've also seen George outbox him. Right. I've seen them have many many rounds together. And, you know, it's just competitive rounds. That was just a 15, 20 seconds of some competitive spa. Right. I, I took absolutely nothing from that, apart from Carl's in good shape because he was still, it, was, it looked like it was the end of the spa and he was still letting his hands go right. with, a, with a lot of intensity. So I think, it was a, I think it was a good thing, the fact that Carl hadn't had easy sparring partners. Right. The one thing you get with um, Chris Eubank Jr. is a handful. You know you're in there. You know you've got to work for every second right. of that round because right. he's a very fit young man. He's strong and he'll be, fi- he'll be filling out stadiums like this one day. Thanks, I appreciate your time, Dave. Thank, Thank you. 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 Thank you